is vegan via desserts. What exactly is a smashed burger? It's exactly what it sounds like, a burger that's been smashed. That's good. Oh. That's good. Bon ho hui. Food trends come and go, just like fashion fads. Some are gonna flash and disappear like a short blip, and others are gonna stick around and become staples of American culture. Never had plant taste like beef before. But how do you know which food trends have a chance to become new classics? Today on Stay or Go, we're going over some of the newest trends, from smash burgers to bon ho hui. They're happening around New York City and all around the rest of the country. We're gonna be talking about why they're getting popular, and then we're gonna share our opinion on whether these food trends are here to stay or go. Quick shout out to our sponsor, Magic Spoon Cereal. They are reinventing your sweet cereal that you had when you were a kid. If you're anything like me, you know, an adult who still likes to eat cereal sometimes, you just want to eat the healthier cereal. So here, Magic Spoon's solving that. 14 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar. It's grain free, it's keto friendly. It has four grams of net carbs per serving, guys. Coming in all your favorite classic four flavors, chocolate, fruity, frosted, peanut butter. For me, I really like chocolatey cereal, and if you can make a chocolate cereal without any sugar and still have it taste good, that's impressive. Let me tell you this, man, the chocolate flavor is coming through. You can see it coming into the milk just like any other chocolatey cereal. It tastes really good. Honestly, I can't tell that this doesn't have any sugar in it. So if you wanna try out the cereal of the future, make sure you click on that link down below. You can get up to $5 off of your purchase and they even have a happiness guarantee, meaning that if you really don't love this stuff, you can get your money back, no questions asked. Make sure you click on that link and thank you for watching. All right, you guys, next up on our stay or go food trends for 2021 is the dedicated Bumbo Hue Vietnamese soup spot. Pho probably just entered the American consciousness, what, 10 years ago? For some people, three years ago, last year? Yeah. But we're moving on to the next level. Pho's here, Bumbo Hue's here. What do you know? I've been eating Vietnamese food for the last 10 years, but I only stick with the number one, the beef noodle soup. So today, we're gonna check out BBH, Bon Ho Hue. All right, you guys, we're in the East Village at Nang La. They specialize in Bon Ho Hue. That's their mainstay dish. Let's check it out. The American people, they travel all around the world. They already try Bon Ho Hue in there. They know the flavor. So I try to make that very easy for American people. They can eat it. My Bon Ho Hue over here, we do like the Pork bone, we cook like six hours to do it with the, the marinade is not too strong, just smoothly. A little more spicy, but the taste is stronger than pho, just beside the pho. We have arrived at Nanla. The Bumble Hue is here. Marco, this is your first time having it, right? First time, and let me tell you something. It smells delicious, and I cannot wait to indulge. All right, immediately, wait. can you give us some insight into the average American, you know, Western person's perception? If they've had pho, but they're looking at Bumble Hue, what, what are you noticing? Um, I feel like for certain people, they get scared of different types of flavors. But as the years go on, and as society's changing, we're adapting to uh, different types of food. Guys, I've got to say, I'm not gonna lie, I've been to Nanla here before. It opened up two months ago. And this is my favorite bowl of bumble hue on the entire East Coast. I like the broth already because I love that spice. And it has like a coconutty flavor too with it. This is one of the main traits of bumble hue is these pork knuckle right here, a pig's foot. I don't love bumble hue everywhere I go. I think it's a little bit more difficult dish due to the fact that there's more complexity to it. But this is my favorite one in the city. Mm. That's good. That's good stuff right there. Bumble Way as a trend for me is a stay. It's gonna take some time though, but I'm coming back here. If you guys have been keeping up with burgers in 2021, you guys know that the Smash Burger is super popular. It's actually originally a style that I believe is from the 1950s or 60s, went away for a while, then it popped up in Denver, then it popped up in LA, and then now somebody had the idea to bring it to New York and make it a whole vibe. Guys, we're outside of Smash Burger, newly open. As a film in this, it's only two days old, and they got cool aesthetics. They got a really no, that's cool not Smash Burger. It's just Smash. Oh my God! Smash, smash Burger's smash? the change. It's just Smash. Yo, no chain, my bad. Right? My right, bad. Not the you know what? Let's go. You want to check out the kitchen? Yeah, yeah. Let's, All go, right, let's go. You know what? Yo, Nash is gonna show us the kitchen. He's gonna show us how to smash a burger. Let's go. What exactly is a smashed burger? Smashed burger is exactly what it sounds like, a burger that's been smashed. Ah. When it goes to the patty, it's gonna create a reaction, you're gonna get a nice caramelized crust, you're gonna have some nice lacy edges, crispy patty, cooks in about three minutes. That's the whole setup, that's it. Your burger cooks in three minutes. It's fast, easy to go, easy man. It's the way you want after, like, after, after a late night. 
Now I know that the Smash Burger got really popular in Denver, pretty popular in LA, but I think some questions remain about whether this style will be able to be brought back to New York City. You know, I'm gonna tell you this, a Smash Burger like this, David, don't be surprised if it kind of reminds you of a chopped cheese. Guys, this is a double classic, let's check it out. It is your classic 1960s, maybe 1950s burger flavor, but totally elevated. So what was really noticeable is the beef is crispy. He likes to call it lacy edges. And that is the thing about the beef that I noticed. So you guys know a few years ago, what was really trendy and what was very Instagrammable was the super tall burgers that were stacked up high that you almost couldn't even hold or even take a bite of. I think some of that is dying down because honestly, at the end of the day, people are coming back to something that you can hold, something that's simple, something that is eatable. The eatability is very high. All right, Andrew, so what's your verdict? Is this trend gonna stay or is this trend gonna go? Yo, as far as the smash burger, I think is here to stay. All right, you guys, the next trend that we're analyzing for stay or go is the proliferation of Cajun seafood boils around New York City. Now, this has been big on the West Coast. It's been big in Houston, you know, Louisiana. But uh, what do you guys know about this? I don't know too much about seafood. I usually just go to the boil, and each year there's more and more seafood spots that are opening up, and I'm excited to try it today. That's true. Hood Chinese spots are closing, and in their place, Cajun seafood Yo, boils. for a little while, we had too many Hood Chinese spots. It was like <laughs> three on every block, so it's really cool to see them like convert to something like this. Cajun, Cajun boil, boil spots. spots. Marco, you got the flounder slider. Yes. Go ahead and go for that. Let's do it. Brooklyn Chris, you got the crop rocks. I've never seen that. I've never seen crop rocks before. Oh, I'm gonna try these, man. This will be the first one. Really simple, but the crispiness to it, the taste is amazing. Wow. Yo, these are amazing. Yo, a little the messy. crab rice, man. I, I could have went with a little bit more crab even, but these are good. Of course, we cannot have the Louisiana style Cajun seafood boil without the shrimp po' boy. Really famous sandwich in Louisiana. Here we go. Not bad. I think a lot of people would be really skeptical about Louisiana style food outside of Louisiana, but I think they're doing a faithful reproduction. All right, you guys, this is the main event, of course, at any Cajun seafood boil is a Cajun seafood boil bag full of shrimps and potatoes and sausages, boudin, crawfish. Mm. You guys, how do you compare and contrast this with that New England Maine style that obviously has been so popular in New York for so long? Well, first of all, I think that it's like a lot more economical. I mean, you go to a typical spot and you get a lobster roll for like $20 a roll and that's, you know, lobster inside a hot dog bun. For this, you can definitely like feed a couple people and have a good time doing it. Italians, we don't eat crawfish. So today I'm gonna change that, but I don't know how to, Go for it. Do I just bite into it? Do I bite it to like ear or like? Well, basically, eyeball? there's this uh, this point that you just gotta split it. You show them Cause show I was about to just done. bite into it. I'm hungry. Isn't it right nah, here? It's right here. Yeah, you gotta pull the tail out right. first. <clears throat> so right here, we're just gonna disconnect it right here at the weak spot. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> and then you're gonna suck the juice out of the head. What? Go like, like that. First Italian to ever eat a crawfish. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> Damn. That is. Show them how you split. It's flavorful. <laughs> oh my. It God. is flavorful. It's, it's like there's the head gut. <laughs> All right, you guys, for this huge trend of hood Chinese spots converting into, you know, Cajun boils, do you guys think that this is going to stay or go? This isn't going anywhere. This is gonna be here to stay. I mean, you can come in and get like, how much is a poor boy under 10 bucks? Yeah, you can get a like, sandwich real quick, yeah. or you can go and bring you know, your girl, your friends, and have a whole meal. It's great. You could spend only 12 for lunch, or you could drop up to like 60 a person. But if you spend 60, you're getting a ton of food. I think we're all in agreement, guys. I think that as far as Cajun food spots go, it's a trend that's here to stay. Our next trend on stay or go is brunch. Now, brunch has been popular in major metropolitan centers around the country for what, 10, 15 years? As far as the youthful brunches go. But that does not mean there's not an opportunity to reinvent it. That's why we're outside of Pig and Butter in the LES today, and Chef Sherry here is putting her own twist on brunch. They call it Fresh Funky Cool. Let's check it out. All right, Sherry, we're in your spot, Pig and Butter. You guys just opened up a few days ago. Can you explain to the people how you're putting your own twist on brunch? So it's brunch all day. All of my creative twists from travels around the world, from Spain, Southern twists, Korean, Mexican, just kind of crazy flavors put together, Mexican chorizo burgers, chorizo fries with chipotle crema, Chinese fried chicken and waffles, beef burgers with flamed blue cheese and all this other crazy stuff. All right, you guys, we're at Pig and Butter trying their proprietary brand new reinvented bacon, egg and cheese. Andrew, this is candy Ooh. bacon. They've got Colombian ahi sauce on here, all types of stuff. I'll tell you this, this is not from your local bodega. In 2021, if you are not putting your sandwich on some brioche buns, you better have something else up your sleeve. That is one of, if not the best bacon, egg and cheese I've ever had. That is the most flavorful bacon 
I've probably ever eaten in my life. You know what I love about this? They didn't try to do too much with it. They gave you just enough. I think nowadays, sometimes there's this temptation. Let's throw pork belly. Let's throw avocado. Let's throw like seven different sauces. Sometimes you guys, less is more. This gave me everything I needed and nothing that I didn't. You guys, this is the marquee item that, you know, perked my ears up. This is Chinese chicken and waffles, almost like a General Tso's or orange chicken, but chicken and waffles. This is so inventive. I've never actually heard of this before, Andrew. Cut it up. So I'm, I'm looking at this waffle and I like it. It's definitely a little bit thinner. It reminds me a little bit more of like the Roscoe's chicken and waffle. So actually there is orange peel and different more like citrus elements in the waffle itself too, mm. to complement obviously the orange flavoring of the chicken. Right off the bat, the chicken is super juicy. Sometimes on chicken and waffles, you know, everybody loves the flavor, but the, the chicken piece has gotta be juicy and gotta flow with the syrup and everything. Cooked to perfection. If you take two things that you like and you put them together, you can't go wrong. Next up, we have something I've never seen before, but this place is called Pig and Butter. Andrew, I'm assuming some of the main items they use in a lot of dishes are pig and butter. There's Bacon here, obviously on the chicken patty right here. We've got the egg, same brioche bun, clarified butter as some sauce. Man, I love the different layers between the tomato, egg, bacon, and chicken. Let me just try to cut this I'll tell you this, they, the dishes here, I have never seen them before myself. Wow, layers upon layers. Yo, you got the whole animal farm. That is good, man. There's a lot of flavors. The blue cheese is cutting through really well. You're addicted to blue I, cheese? I'm not, you... <laughs> okay. Next up, we've got the Mexican chorizo fries here at Pig and Butter. They've got the shoestring Mexican chorizo right here. They've got a homemade crema, and then uh, we've got the egg and everything here. This ooh, runny, real runny. Oh man, Andrew, you know I am a fry mm -hmm. guilty. You know my doctor doesn't like it, but I'm <laughs> oh I'm in the fries. When you think Mexican fries, you think carne asada, super fries more like the LA San Diego style. But this is really bringing it with that sour hit from the chorizo. Mm. It's almost like eating the inverse of like a papaya salad because the shoestring fries kind of take on that shape and you're almost eating it like a quinoa bowl except it's fries. So I actually like that form that a lot. Is, that's crazy that you compared it to a Thai papaya salad, yes. but I see what you're saying. All right, so our next two trends that we're gonna be discussing in Stay or Go is actually the bacon, egg and cheese and the tamale. We're outside of Factory Tamil and that's what they're recreating. They have more like modern fusion tamales that they're trying to serve to, you know, the masses out here and then also, they do like an elevated bacon, egg, and cheese. Ooh, I'm intrigued. I, I never had a tamale before, and I'm a native New Yorker, so it's in my DNA to eat a bacon, egg, and cheese every morning. All right, so this one's a $7 brioche bun. Ooh. Nice, you know, very okay, okay, tasty okay. bacon, egg, and cheese, B-E-C. Let's do it. Let's check it out. Definitely before we opened Factory Tamale, the last thing you would come to the city for was tamales. And I think once we opened up, people saw that, you know, especially being all natural and, you know, tamales, People want to come to the city now to get our tamales. You know, a lot of the people here, they don't even know what a tamale is, you know, let alone how to eat one, you know? Sometimes they bite into the corn husk and we're like, no, don't do that, man. It's a, it's a Mexican dish that's so popular yet so unknown. So I think the fact that we're bringing that to the city, you know, it could influence a lot of people, even business owners, you know, to make their own concept of tamales. And I think that's uh, something to look forward to. All right, when we're talking about trendy foods here at Factory Tamil, they switching it up. Now, I can't I can't say that it maybe has a lot of Mexican flavor in it, but they're just doing it differently. This looks so different, but it smells like I've never smelled a bacon, egg, and cheese like this before. So it actually has the elements of a real sandwich. It has the chipotle mayo, and then it has the mixed greens and the tomato. Ooh. It just smells fresh. Mexican bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh my God, bro. This has so many more elements than your regular bacon, egg, and cheese. It has avocado, mixed greens, tomatoes, chipotle mayo. It almost is tasting like something else, but I gotta say, man, I'm feeling this a lot. Oh, this is amazing. All right, so, question damn. Marco. The trend of souping up and upgrading your bacon, egg, and cheese, is it staying or going? It's a stay. It's a stay. It's staying. All right, so our second item here at Factory Tamil is the new age tamales. They're hitting the city. Usually it's hard to find authentic tamales in the city. Here in my hand, I have the poblano mole one, which is very traditional. And then you got the bacon and mozzarella Ooh. one. This How do you eat it though? I got. I need like a, uh, no, no, what I think am I supposed to do? We can eat it on a plate, but let's just take a bite, man. This is okay. a hand food. It's New York. Yes, we gotta sir. keep it moving. That's it. It's definitely my first time ever having it. Really good. Definitely different from like a taco, but really, really good. The cornmeal is made fresh here. The mesa, it's like grinded up. And honestly, this is really nice to eat. This is definitely one of the best tamales I've ever had in my life. Is it a stay or go? I'm gonna go on the go with this. Not that it's not bad, it's really, really good. Okay. 
I just feel like us New Yorkers, we love our tacos. You can't, you can't deny a taco. Okay, so they got to get through tacos first. Get through the taco first, and then 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 we could talk. Okay. Either way, if you guys are looking for a good tamale in the city, you come to Factory Tamil. They got two locations. Let's go. All right, our next spot on Stay or Go. We are outside of Bamboo in Chinatown, and we're having some authentic Vietnamese desserts. Of course, we got coconut water and coconut milk ones. Marco, what's your experience with Vietnamese food? So the last 10 years, I just have Viet Pho. Um, I never had the dessert. I mean, I'm lying. I had the dessert, just a green tea ice cream, which is... <laughs> yeah, green tea, it's not a traditional Vietnamese it's... dessert. You've never really had coconut water? You've had it out of the box. I had the box, not like this though. Yeah. And I certainly never had coconut milk, but I like this already because it has the Italian flight colors. All right, so we're gonna try it. Marco, I wanna get your thoughts on whether you think that this could be an overall popular trend in New York, or maybe it might have to only exist, you know, in the Asian areas like right. Chinatown. Of course, you have your pandan jelly, you have your fresh coconut slices here, you have basil. We got the long an substituted with the lychee, of course, so fresh Vietnamese desserts. So refreshing, man, I love that. Wow. It's one of my favorite drinks in the world, man. Remember like the old Asian candies they had, where you, it was like very jelly, you open it up and you just like, it was like yeah. jelly. No, with you're like talking about the lychee cups. The lychee cups. You've had that. I've okay. had that growing up, yes. I it, grew up in Chinatown, guys. Yeah, they okay. do have something similar in here, but it definitely yeah, tastes that. It might be made up of, of pandan instead of lychee, but yeah. I mean, I think there's lychee jellies in there too. What do you think the average non Asian who did not grow up in Chinatown might think if they drank that? I feel that us white people want to be really healthy freaks now, that they're going to see this and they're going to see that it says coconut water. They're gonna like this because it is healthy and it looks like a vegan option drink. All right, the other drink I have to have you try is the coconut milk one. This is the Fruit Addict. So it has coconut milk instead of coconut water. It's gonna have pandan jellies, it has jackfruit, it has red tapioca. It has, it's way more colorful. Wow, what do you think about the average non-Asian in New York City? Are they gonna mess with that? Hell yeah, okay. that's really, really good. All right, so whether this trend of Vietnamese desserts is gonna stay or go, Marco, you are saying stay. 100% stay. I think that it is going to stay, but more within the Asian community. I do think other people need to be exposed to kind of the tropical, fresh flavors of this. It might just take a little bit of more effort for people to try it. So that's all I'm saying. The buy-in's a little high, but man, again, guys, shout out to Bamboo Desserts right here in Chinatown, New York. I just hope some hipster in the West Village doesn't rebrand this drink into like the vegan coconut milk drink, and it's gonna be like $35 for this thing. That's what I don't wanna happen. Get it first here in Chinatown, man. Get it in Chinatown, support your local business. Somebody is gonna brand it and go hard with the vegan aspect, but bamboo is the real deal. All right, our next spot on Stay or Go is a brand new spot. It's a plant-based chocolate spot. This is very, very 2021, man. What do you think about plant-based chocolate? Uh, I never had it before, so I'm intrigued, and uh, I'm used to just eating my Reese's Pieces, my m and so this is gonna be a cool treat. So plant-based chocolate means that there's no dairy in this, so I think it fits on the street, because in the East Village, everything's trendy. There's a lot of vegan spots, so it's very fitting for the area but one of the owners is in there, so let's go talk to him and find out more. I love vegans. I love vegans. <laughs> Yo, you said that with so much conviction, I almost believed you for a second. <laughs> All right, so we have the top four flavors from Costco, which is the new plant-based chocolate shop over on this street, guys. They use a lot of like coconut milk and other things, you know. They said that the process of making non-dairy chocolate, it's not super complicated, but you can make, you know, anything uh, vegan nowadays. So this is the pistachio saffron. Yo, let's do it. That's sweet, it's good. That's really good actually. Yeah. No, no, it really is. I could definitely taste the pistachio, but that coconut. Okay, next up we have the marzipan, which is essentially like an almond paste. I like the pistachio a lot better, but that's not bad. Still good. Yeah, definitely okay. good. All right, next up we got the uh, yuzu, which is of course the Japanese fruit, also in Korea known as yuja. Let's go. That's a funky taste right there. Wow. Pretty good, you know, I'm converting, you know, into uh, my vegan ways. I'm converting slowly but shortly. All right, last but not least, we got matcha cream. But Let's do it. all vegan. Very, this was the most different mm. taste, I think, out of all of them. Yo, you know what it is? Beyond their actual chocolate, the fillings are really good. Yo, absolutely, yeah. Ultimately, I mean, 
I'm not a chocolate aficionado. I can't tell that that's actually plant-based chocolate. I just think it's like slightly dark chocolate. What you yeah, I, I agree with you because I, if you if you wouldn't have told me this was vegan, I would have just been like, all right, let me shower down. So as far as this trend of plant-based chocolate staying or going, what do you think, man? <laughs> These days, everybody's a vegan, and I might be a vegan soon. One day, one day too, I might be a vegan. Seriously. So I'm gonna go stay. All right, so I'm gonna say stay, but in the long term, because I think that plant-based stuff is actually popular. And of course, plant-based meat is like the number one thing to get popular. But I think chocolate will be like the last one. I and mean, when we're talking about a confectionery, it's a candy. So I think that's gonna be the last thing that people really are pushing to make vegan. But of course, I mean, the fact that this spot already opened up, I do think they gotta make it cheaper because that's that's pretty expensive. Yeah. $3 a piece is, is quite pricey. Yeah. It's pricey, it's yeah. pricey. But hey, again, if you guys are into plant-based stuff, I mean, their fillings there are really good. So check out Casco. All right, you guys, everybody knows that the Nashville hot chicken sandwich has taken over Los Angeles. Andrew, it's starting to get a foothold here in New York City, but it is not as popular as it is in LA. Yeah, I would say anything that revolves around spicy chicken, it is more popular in the South and the West Coast. But in the East Coast, they have a lot of chicken sandwiches. They don't have a lot of spicy Nashville ones. David, you have the spiciest one they have. It is dipped in hot red oil and with a dry powder on top. I'm not gonna lie, you gotta, you gotta be careful. And then this is actually a plain joint, no spice at all, just pepper. Let's see if the Nashville hot chicken sandwich is a trend that's gonna stay or go in New York. Oh my God, it is spicy. Uh, easy. Yo, this one's good. For a plain one, the pepper and the coleslaw is really coming through. I'm enjoying this one You know a what lot. I love about it though? It is chicken thigh. You can see that it's dark meat. Dark meat always tastes better, guys. I don't care if it has veins or it's blood or it's fatty or it has more ligaments, whatever. It tastes a lot better. Let me try this extra hot spicy one. I'm gonna maybe say mm. that the non-spicy one's even better. Mm. Yo, this is good. Straight up, this wow. is one of the best chicken sandwiches I've had though. And I've been eating a lot of spicy chicken sandwiches lately. Wow. This sandwich? has a really strong like cookout vibe. It kind of tastes homemade. I think for a non-spicy chicken sandwich, this is relatively better than this. Now, this is not a bad sandwich at all, but I've had better spicy chicken sandwiches. I haven't had that many non-spicy chicken sandwiches better than that. Yo, I've got a pretty crazy take on stay or go. Is this trend gonna stay or is this trend gonna go away? I think that this trend as a national United States, North America trend is here to stay. But as far as New York City goes, I think it may struggle to get a foothold. You've got halal food, pizzas, you know, even tacos are coming up right now. I just don't know if there's space in New York City for the Nashville hot chicken sandwich, but nationally, absolutely. I'm gonna have to slightly disagree with you. I think people in New York, they like Sichuan Mala flavored things. I think it's just a matter of time before they get onto the spicy chicken sandwich. I know New Yorkers, they like strong flavors. So I think they're gonna go for it eventually. It may not be ever as popular as it is on the West Coast, but man, I think, yeah, yeah, spicy chicken sandwich. I think this is here to stay. Ooh. What you guys are witnessing is the invention of American poutine. Ooh, what's this, a boot? Oh my gosh, look at this. All right, David, what's American about it? I see the cheese curds, I see the gravy. Of course, they have the chopped up bacon, they got the little sour cream and your scallions. Now, I'll tell you this, guys. American poutine is something I've been waiting for for a very long time. I personally love poutine. Yeah, it is true that other than like kind of the Mexican super fries, which kind of has like carne asada, beans, and guacamole and stuff like that, there's really no wet fry dish that's really popular in America. American poutine. It actually does taste like some interesting mixture. It doesn't fully taste like a baked potato. It kind of takes the best elements of a baked potato and the best elements of fries, and it's like a crispy baked potato. American poutine. Okay. As a trend, is it staying or going away? Oh man, I'm pretty torn because I hope that it stays. I hope that there's an American poutine chain that emerges, but I just don't know if it will. I'm not convinced that this is gonna stay around because I know a lot of Americans who don't wanna eat like saucy fries, whether that be kind of your Mexican super fries or poutine, you know? So I'm gonna be honest, I I'm gonna say it's, a, it's going away. But you know what? Who knows? The future is different. 
but it's coming. All right, you guys, we are in front of Fresh Canes NYC with the owner, purveyor, Winsley. Do you actually partner with somebody from LA, the San Gabriel Valley, the 626, to bring this product to New York? That's right, so the original store is out in Rosemead, California. We've been there for over five years now. So we thought we'd bring this concept over to New York and see how we do. I'm not gonna lie, I never thought that Rosemead, California would be a brand out in New York that meant something, but you're making it mean something, man. That's it, you know, it's always the West Coast vibes and the East Coast vibes. Everyone in the East Coast wants to be in the West Coast. Everyone in the West Coast wants to be in the East Coast. Thanks. What's been great is just hearing the feedback from people saying, wow, I haven't had sugar cane since I was back in Singapore. I haven't had this since I was back in Egypt, India, and just bringing everyone back to, to their home country. is just a great feeling. And I think it was really cool that you said sugar cane is like a multicultural thing. It's not just from Asia. Why do you think it took so long to bring it out here? Is it because of climate or what is it? Well, it's just, it's just a raw sugar cane itself you gotta think about pound or two pounds mix one drink you gotta just think about just lugging that around and storing it and being able to care for it the all natural products so you do have a window no preservatives in it so it's a lot there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving variables to it <laughs> okay so this is not an easy product to bring to new york city no definitely not specifically fresh canes whether it's an nyc or rosemead this is my favorite drink that I discovered in the past 12 months. In terms of this trend staying or going away, Andrew, mm -hmm. I think this trend is here to stay. People just gotta try it. Once they get over that hump, man, I think it's gonna take off. I could see a lot more restaurants serving sugar cane and maybe they're not even doing it fresh. They might be buying it from people like you, Winsley, you know, that are that are bringing the actual sugar cane in, but I can see this being on the menu at a lot of restaurants in the future. I think fresh sugar cane drinks are here to stay in New York City. Our next food trend on stay or go is the Tres Leches cake. Now I know this is originally from Mexico, uh -huh. but the owners of this particular Tres Leches store are Dominican. Now David, I think this is important because Tres Leches has been increasing in popularity over the years. Previously, you would only get it at the Hispanic bakeries, you know, the Dominican spots or the Mexican spots. But now here on Orchard Street in the LES, they have their own Tres Leches cafe where they only serve Tres Leches cake. And I've seen all types of customers here. So it goes to show you that the Tres Leche's trend is really reaching outside of the Hispanic community. Everybody's enjoying it. Let's check out the different varieties that they got. All right, you guys, we're at Chess Leche's Cafe. You can take a look at the passion fruit. We have a flan de coco, AKA a coconut flan. We have a passion fruit Tres Leche's. And of course we got the Cuatro Leche's, which is kind of mind blowing to a lot of people because what's the next progression after Cuatro Leche's? Cinco Leche's, it's like five milks. I think the thing that makes Tres Leches really, really dope, it's actually sitting in like a pool of its own juices. I think that's the best feature of it all, man. Let's go into this. I've never had a guava Tres Leches. Yo, I love how the cake really holds up. You know, it feels like wet, but it's not soggy. What are you talking about, man? Passion fruit, guava. Yo, this is really good. It's a very dense cake. Mm. Wow, I gotta, I gotta take one more bite. The passion fruit comes through more on that one. Definitely try that one. I'm going to give this one a five out of five. A I mean, cinco a out of cinco. All right, you guys, for round two here at Tres Leches Cafe, I've actually got the original Latino dessert, the flan. Yo, look at that. They have kind of like a, uh, what is that in the middle? Like an egg yolk? Wow. Let's just check it out. So the fourth milk, you guys might be wondering, in this Cuatro de Leches is a, uh, like a caramel dulce, I believe. Mm. Wow. I'm getting some caramel vibes, but man, as far as the cakes go, guys, come here and get the passion fruit one. Come here and get the Cuatro. So do we believe that the trend of specialty Tres Leches cake shops will continue? Is it here to stay or go? I think that the trend will stay, but I do think in the future, we're gonna see a vegan Tres Leches because you know milk is an animal product and you know how the vegan trend is going. I'm just saying they're gonna have to come out with a soy milk, oat milk Tres Leches. I don't know, but I would imagine it's coming somewhere in the future. Oh, my bad. They, they have one coming. So yes, they're on trend. They got it. Next up on our 2021 food trend crawl, stay or go, is the espresso bar. Now, everybody is aware of what a coffee shop is like. You know, you got everything from super old school 1960s to Starbucks, you know, old Starbucks, new Starbucks, Starbucks Reserve. But we're talking about 2021, Andrew. We've arrived at the espresso bar. Behind us, this spot, Velvet Coffee, they actually feel more like an art house or art gallery with an espresso bar in it rather than just a regular coffee shop. It's difficult to describe the vibe 
inside of an espresso bar, you gotta, gotta take a look for yourself. All right, we're here at Velvet Brew. I'm here with Milan. How would you describe how an espresso bar is different than a coffee shop? An espresso bar focuses more on like the coffee. It's like more of an attention to detail. You would definitely see like a real espresso bar in Italy or in France, you know. Mostly it's just the ambiance that it offers, you know. So it's mostly just like the, the atmosphere that people would want to try and resemble. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is my very first cup of coffee that I've ever had from an espresso bar. Andrew, they were telling you that the concept of an espresso bar, more like a bar-like vibe, but serving coffee only, is really a concept from Europe that people are attempting to make popular in the United States now. Yeah, he said that trying to be just purely an espresso bar probably wouldn't fly as well in America because you need other items like pastries and stuff. But the traditional espresso bar in Europe, they're not gonna have snacks. So here I got the Velvet Brew. This is their coffee. It's like a vanilla latte with oat milk with like some extra sugar blended in. David, you have a cappuccino. Okay. All right, I will say I did enjoy the interior of Velvet Brew a lot. It kind of has this French fashion boutique type vibe to it. But as far as this trend of espresso bars taking over the coffee shop in America, stay or go, I'm gonna go with go. I think this trend would more go away than it would stay. I do agree with you in the extent that I don't think people are gonna be popping up espresso bar after espresso bar. But I do think the few espresso bars that there are like Velvet Brew, I think they're gonna do fine. I just don't think there's gonna be a bunch of them. There is probably not a single food that New York is more synonymous with than the slice spot. Yeah, you can get them for a dollar, you can get the slices for two dollars, three dollars. Obviously, usually you get what you pay for. But listen, guys, it's 2021. This spot behind me, Dough Pizza, just opened up this week. And let me tell you this, they have a fig and bacon pizza by the slice. Now that is something completely new to this area. For the longest time, you could only just get, you know, very standard issue flavors, which I think are fine. A lot of people want those. There's a reason why people mostly carry the standard issue stuff, but fig and bacon at essentially a slice spot. All right, you guys, we are looking at the fig and bacon slice here at Dough Pizza. Obviously, like we said, guys, any new spot in 2021 is essentially just gonna be doing something different, thinking different. I mean, fig, a lot of people will call this a fancy food. Let's see how it tastes on pizza. As far as my opinion on this goes, I like it. I give it a four out of five. It tastes like an English muffin with a little bit of cheese, jam, butter. I think it ultimately boils down to the location and the demographics. And um, even if this is like two, three streets up north, it might be a little bit more hipster and it might work. But down here in the nitty gritty, it's a 50-50. Andrew, you are taking a look at a pistachio Nutella cream slice right now. And this is from Zazzy's. It's a plant-based, not vegan, but they do have vegan option pizza spots here. So I feel like this is just an update to your old school New York pizzeria. It's very, very rare to find a dessert pizza at a slice shop. They make this Nutella slice fresh. I've seen them. They cut the crust in half and then they smear Nutella on half of it. And it's like a sandwich. That's good. For somebody with a sweet tooth like myself, I love that Nutella slice. Andrew, this is a plant-based panzerati. Woo! So, like I we never said, thought guys, I would hear that phrase before. The main chef here, Dominic, he's this big Italian guy. We talked to him in a previous video. He's really trying to bring some authentic Italian snacks to the game, you know, to a slice shop. That's why Zazzy's is doing things a little differently. All right, it's like a gi gigantic fried empanada. That is a gigantic fried fluffy empanada. David, when it comes to the dessert slices, and dessert Italian snacks. You think the trend is staying or going? I want it to stay because I really like it. I order it. I would actually sometimes take it over a normal slice. If they were able to make a dessert slice that could sit there next to the other slices, dessert slices might stick around and some people might buy it. But I do not think that them making the Nutella slice fresh every time for every customer is efficient. That's why I don't think the trend is gonna stay. All right, you guys, that does it for the first edition of our trending foods, stay or go. Like we said, you know, regardless of whether we believe a trend is gonna stay or go, it's ultimately gonna depend on a couple of factors. Number one, most obviously how much people like them, but also the marketing, the location. and it also goes to show you that just because something is trendy in one part of America doesn't mean for sure it'll be trendy even in New York. Let us know in the comments section below which of the foods that we tried in this video you think are going to stay and which ones are going to go and what food trends you predict are going to be up next for 2022. Hey man, doing this video did remind me again how trendy New York City is because you cannot necessarily get all these items in any other city.
All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you turn on your notifications, hit that like button, and until next time, we're out. Peace. Peace. Oh, what's this, a boot? Probably in Europe, they'll be like, oh my God, he's so big, grande, he's more grandioso.